Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the PDCA cycle, also known as the Deming cycle or the Schuhart cycle. Now, the PDCA cycle is a tool that can help you continuously improve your products, services and organisational processes. It's a four-stage cycle for continuous improvement. It was created by Dr William Edwards Deming, a pioneer of the quality management movement in the 1950s. And it's based on the idea that companies can simultaneously improve quality whilst reducing costs. Now, reducing costs may seem counterintuitive because you have to invest in the PDCA cycle, but it achieves this by reducing waste, rework, litigation, all while increasing customer loyalty. Now, PDCA stands for Plan, Do, Check, Act, and it's a structured approach to help you move closer to any goal you're trying to reach. It doesn't matter what type of goal you choose, but typically the goals are related to quality improvement. You continuously improve by iterating through the cycle repeatedly, each loop bringing you closer to your desired goal. And it's a great tool to avoid analysis paralysis as it gets you quickly testing ideas and moving forward. Each iteration you take through the loop either improves your situation or provides valuable feedback you can utilize to increase your chances of fixing the problem in the next loop. Let's take a look at each of the four stages in a little more detail. So the first step of the cycle involves selecting your problem or opportunity. Maybe your website turns off customers or your marketing campaigns aren't achieving the results you desire. Whatever the issue, you must first aim to accurately appraise the situation and understand the root cause of the problem. Now, once you've done that, you can generate potential solutions and then select the most promising solution. And the solution you choose will often be on a very tiny scale. Remember, it's small, quick, incremental improvements that you're after. Finally, you should set some measurable targets or goals you hope to achieve from this iteration through the cycle. So the second step of the cycle is to implement your chosen option on a small scale via a trial run. This will determine if your solution achieves your desired outcome, but do so in a way that has minimal disruption to your business as usual. Now, in this step, you also need to collect data for later analysis and ensure that your solution is adequately tested so that you don't draw the wrong conclusion later on. The third step of the cycle is to analyze the data you've collected and compare your actual results against your desired results. This will allow you to evaluate how well your solution worked. If your solution failed, then you need to return to the first step of the cycle. If your solution worked, then you can advance to the final step of the cycle, step four. But if your solution sort of worked, you can consider tweaking it and returning to the do stage again. Now, it's also vital to understand any unexpected issues you found by examining their causes in this step. And this information can be fed into the final step of the cycle. So the final step is to implement your solution fully. Your chosen solution becomes the new baseline. And so you must take care to document the change adequately, sustain the change and integrate it into any existing systems. So everything I've just said can be summarized by this 12 step PDCA cycle image. So just to recap, we have first select the problem opportunity, then understand the current situation, find the root cause. Once you've done that, set some goals, generate some solutions and select the one that you think is best. Next, you implement on a small scale and make sure you collect data when you do so. Then you move on and you analyze the data and from this you can draw some, some conclusions. You then decide whether you're going to roll out your solution across the organization, adapt it in some way or abandon it altogether. And finally, you integrate it into your existing systems and sustain it. Now, remember that the PDCA cycle is a loop. And so once the final step is complete, you re-enter step one again looking for new ways to improve even further. Doing this creates a virtuous cycle of continuous improvement with each loop of the process, bringing you closer to your ultimate goal. 
A new baseline after each cycle sustains the improvement, allowing each cycle to build on the previous cycle so quality improves continuously over time. So when to use the PDCA cycle? It's particularly useful when you want to improve a product, service or process, explore multiple solutions and obtain feedback in a small way, avoid waste by identifying ineffective solutions before you roll them out at scale, implement organizational change and implement Six Sigma or total quality management. So let's take a look at an example. So for this example, imagine you run an online e-commerce store and over the last few months, your website has suffered increasing outages. So you decide to put together a small task force and ask them to improve your website's overall quality using the PDCA cycle. Now, success will be measured by the rate of decline in downtime and customer support tickets raised. So let's examine what two very simple iterations through the PDCA cycle might look like. So firstly, iteration one. So let's start with plan. Now, there are many reasons why your servers are crashing, but you don't know which is the most prevalent and you don't know the root cause. So you decide to implement a simple change to collect data on why your servers are crashing. So for the do stage, you simply implement your change on just one of your servers, and then you check if it works. Now your update, in this case worked as planned. And it's been running for some time and you can also observe no side effects. So now it's time to act. You've established that the update is working as hoped with no adverse side effects. So you roll it out across your entire organization. So now we move on to iteration two. So for plan, then from iteration one, you can see the most common cause of your servers crashing and you deep dive to find the root cause. So from this, you identify two solutions, both equally likely to fix the issue. So you decide to test the solution that takes the least time to implement. Onto the do phase, you implement the change on one of your servers again. Next check, your update works, but this time there are unintended and undesirable consequences. So you collect data to ensure you understand these issues. Finally, onto the act phase, you remove your test update from its server and decide not to roll it out. This may seem to you like an unsuccessful iteration, but you've collected valuable information for the next iteration. So as you can see, by performing many iterations over a long period of time, the quality of your e-commerce store will dramatically improve. And that's going to result in happier and more loyal customers. Now, there are a number of advantages and disadvantages associated with the PDCA cycle. In terms of advantages, then the model is versatile as it can help you achieve any personal or business goal. Although the model is simple, it's a powerful tool to drive meaningful change over time. And finally, the model encourages you to take action quickly with each iteration moving you closer to your goal or increasing your knowledge. Now, in terms of disadvantages, then it isn't something you use once. It's an ongoing and continuous process. And as such, it requires buy-in from all levels of the organization. Next, unlike traditional projects, you cannot understand your costs, savings, or quality improvements before you begin. They can only be discovered once you've committed to and are running the PDCA cycle. Next, the model encourages you to analyze and react. It doesn't encourage you to be proactive or to act proactively. And finally, it isn't suited to situations where you have to make rapid decisions. Time must be allowed to perform analysis and brainstorm, for example. So in summary, the PDCA cycle is an excellent tool for reaching a goal or introducing improvements in a sustainable, thoughtful and long-term way. Each cycle begins with a planning stage in which you identify and understand issues. You then generate solutions and choose the best one or best ones. In the do stage, you implement your solution in a small scale way. You then check the results in the check phase to see if they are as expected. Finally, if your solution performs as hoped, you roll it out in full in the act stage before beginning the cycle all over again. 
So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.